Hey there, what's up? This is Tim Warner from CBT Nuggets. Welcome to the CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget entitled Microsoft Link Server 2010 Configuring Link Users. One thing you should be aware of right out of the gate in terms of Link 2010 provisioning is that your Active Directory user accounts are not automatically provisioned for Link. That is, you have your Active Directory domain up and running, you install and deploy Link Server 2010, there are additional actions required on your part to get your users link enabled. Two main ways to go, friends. One is using PowerShell 2.0, specifically the link management shell that loads in all of those modules and commandlets. We have a commandlet called enable CS user. Just by way of hint, CS is the prefix for all of the link server 2010 commandlets, at least the noun portion of those commandlets. And you pass in a number of parameters. We'll cover those parameters in a demo in just a moment. The other way to go is link server 2010 control panel, which you probably know is the Silverlight application that gives link administrators a graphical user interface, a wrapper, or a layer, as it were, above the PowerShell 2.0 that's actually doing the work under the hood. As far as provisioning users en masse or in a batch way, you can do that through Control Panel. However, PowerShell is intended for these kinds of batch large-scale operations. You can look online, there's lots of folks in the Link community who have built PS1 PowerShell scripts that enable you to say, feed in a CSV file of your Active Directory users and then provision all those users for a link in one fell swoop. Two quick planning questions that you need to answer before you create your link users are addressing. In Voice over IP, we have the Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP. These addresses resemble email addresses. In best case scenario, you want those to match just for convenience on the admin backend side as well as the user experience side on the front. Secondly, what are you going to do as far as a telephone number is concerned? Are you using Using internal extensions. This is often the case when you're migrating from a traditional PBX telephony infrastructure. Are you going to provision DIDs, direct inward dials? That's the equivalent of a public IP address. A user can dial anywhere in the world, receive a call conceivably from anywhere in the world via their DID. The big thing here is that we want to make sure our telephone URIs are E.164 compliant. That is a ITU standard that defines how telephone numbers are formatted. Enough blabbing on the whiteboard, let's jump into the demo and I'll show you how this stuff works. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to configure an Active Directory user account for Link by using the Link Server Control Panel. In the full training I give for CBT Nuggets, you'll learn more about PowerShell and doing these same actions using the PowerShell, but in the interest of time here, I'm going to focus on the graphical interface. The first thing I want to show you, by the way, I'm on a Windows Server 2008 R2 member server named Link Nugget, and it's my front end server for Link. I've made a remote connection to my domain controller, DC Nugget. And I'm showing you here a user account I've created called James Conrad. Of course, James is my friend as well as my CPT my CBT Nuggets fellow trainer. I don't think he'd mind my using him as a representative example. And we're going to enable this guy, James, for Link. Unfortunately, we don't have shell integration yet, maybe in Link Server 2013. We can't Link enable from any other tool other than a Link management tool. So here we are in the control panel. I talk about the major Link components, at admin and client side tools in another micro nugget. So check that out if you want to know more about what the control panel is. We're going to go right to the Users tab in the primary navigation. And in the secondary navigation, at first blush, you think, well, I must not have any enabled users. That's not true, actually. It's a little bit confusing and misleading. If you hit Find here with no search criteria, then you'll get back all of your users who are currently enabled or at least registered as link users. You as an administrator can always select a user, and then from the Action menu, you can disable an account, you can change their security policies, their PIN, you could remove them from Link Server. You can do a lot of stuff with the user once they've already been added to the system, but we haven't enabled anybody yet. So you're probably looking over here, what's up with this button? You can enable users or contacts. I would suggest that we stick with Active Directory users. Contacts are used under the hood in certain select circumstances. For instance, integration between Link Server 2010 and 
Exchange Server 2010 Unified Messaging. When you're bringing in Active Directory users, we're going to create new link server users from user accounts. All right, that brings us to this Silverlight form. There's not too much in here. Most of the controls deal with policy, and that's how you give and revoke and customize privilege in Link, and that's going to affect the entire Link user experience from instant messaging to voice telephony, enterprise voice as it's known, to conferencing, to location services and emergency services like 911, etc. But first things first, we have to bring in one or more users. You see this users field is empty. The little asterisk means it's a required field. Let's click add and we'll tap into Active Directory by typing some or all of that user's name. I believe I used J Conrad as his user account identity in Active Directory. I sure did. So let me select that name and click OK. Now you can keep adding and do multiple selections if you want to enable multiple users. That's a nice convenience for larger shops. You have to assign your link users to a specific front-end pool. Again, I recorded a separate micro nugget on describing the different server roles, so you'll know what a front-end pool is after you check that out. On my system, I have one. Larger environments, you may have multiple. You'll want to choose the pool that's nearest to your user, where your user spends his or her days most of the time. Next, we generate the user's SIP URI. SIP is the signaling protocol that's used with this product. Actually, it's used with VoIP, voice over IP telephony anyway. URI is going to be a unique identifier. And there's lots of flexibility here. You can use their email address if they have one configured. We can use their UPN. You can use a custom format. I don't know if you remember, but in the previous box when I found Jay Conrad, his UPN, and this is something you've familiar with if you've used Kerberos, is going to be their SAM account name, J Conrad at the domain name. That's a whole planning issue into itself. Ideally, you want your SIP URI to match your user's email address. That doesn't always happen, but that's the best case scenario. I'm going to choose UPN for my option. For telephony, by default, the user is only able to do link calls, PC to PC peer calls. If you have Enterprise Voice deployed, which I do, that gives the user the ability to hit the public switch telephone network and make and receive public calls. If you're going to do that, you have to specify a line URI, dial policy, and voice policy. The line URI is in the format of tel, colon, plus, and then you need an e.164 valid string. How about 1615-555-4088? For dial plan policy, automatic is the default. That'll pick up any policies that are in the list and the most granular one that applies to that user. There's separate policies for dial dial plan. This deals with how number strings are translated that come from the user. They're translated by link to basically resolve them. Voice policy grants and revokes voice features like three-way calling, call forwarding, etc. Conferencing policy, client version policy. There's a lot here. You learn about it all in my full Link Server 2010 Administration CBT Nuggets training course. When you're satisfied, you click enable. And then if all goes well, you'll see this user is now enabled for link. That's it. If we come back to Active Directory, there's still sometimes some ragged edges here in terms of inner operation. We might want to specify the telephone number here as well. We're going to want to do that in E165 format, 1615-555-4088. So now this user should be able to log into the link client, which is how we'll complete this demo. I'll bring up the link client. I'm logged in as Susan. I'm going to open the action menu and sign out. Now I'm going to log in as jconrad at nuggetlab.com. My status, I'm going to say I'm busy because I'm getting used to this stuff. And we'll try to sign in. Prompts for a password. I'm going to cache the password because this is going to be my main computer. Put in that password. And here we go. There's no picture yet. There's some customization that we'll want to do. You can add your activity up here just like you're leaving a Facebook status update. That gets shared with your contacts and you can see again under the my activities the feed of your contacts and as they change the status you can see that little social networking built into link as well i hope that this has been informative for you and i'd like to thank you for viewing